Welcome to lecture five, assembly shift in torrent stack up. So what is assembly shift? Let's have a look at this picture. Here, there's a part number one. And here is a fastener. This one is a hole here. So we need to mount these parts, assembly these parts to these holes. So eventually we'll get this one, right? The fastener theoretically will be centered, will normal to this holes. There's no shift, right? The position is center to center. But that's during the actual assembly, this is not the case. And uh, pretty much you're going to see these parts will be tightened up with threaded uh, bolt and it's not in the center. The hole and the fastener is off the center, right? And eventually you may get this kind of situation. And here there's a you know, knot here. So we call this assembly shift. What, what does it mean? It means if there's a clearance between the hole and the fastener, and the second, these two parts are allowed to move freely, right? There's all possibility that these two parts could be located this position and the other position other way. So we call this assembly shift and this assembly, sh assembly shift is very important during our torrent stack up. So you look at it from here, you may see here, assembly shift means the amount the parts can move during assembly due to this clearance between hole and fastener. It could be hole and fastener and it could be also like a key and a keyway as long as there's a clearance then there's a possibility that these two parts can move freely to each other during assembly, right? So the premise, the premise for this one is these two parts is allowed to move freely, right? From, from, uh, from nominal locations because of the clearance, okay? All right. The next question is, if there's assembly shift, what's the maximum amount for this assembly shift? In order to get the maximum amount of assembly shift, the hole must be the maximum diameter. So let's put that away. The hole must be maximum diameter 5.2 and the shaft here the shaft is a bolt. The bolt M4, all right, roughly is diameter 4, right? So we use the maximum hole minus the diameter of the bolt. Then you get this one, 1.2. The, ga the gap or the clear clearance here is 0 0.6. 1.2 is diameter clearance. But when we measure that from the nominal position, this is nominal position, right? This is the bolt center and the whole center is aligned. The gap here and the gap here is 0 0.6. Then the maximum deviation will be, if you move this way, is 0 0.6 or you can move other way is also 0 0.6 it's allowed to shift in two directions so we are divided by 2 is 0 0.6 plus minus so what does it mean plus minus the plus minus means in different direction either you move this way or move other way from nominal location right but the distance the amount you are allowed to shift is 0 0.6 okay and we may also notice there's a two kinds of assembly here number one here is a threaded hole 
with the bolts inside. And once bolts inside is fixed, the bolt cannot move, the fastener cannot move. So that's why we call this fixed fastener assembly. The second case is both parts has the holes without threaded, right? It's not threaded, it's just holes, right? Okay. Then the fastener is allowed to shift freely. Or other way, both part is allowed to have assembly shift. For example, here, this part can be shift downward and this part can shift upward, right? So obviously, there's a larger amount of assembly shift for this case. And in this case, we call this floating fastener. Why? Because the fastener is allowed to float up and down, right? And there's more assembly shift comparing with fixed fastener. Okay. Once we have assembly shift, eventually it will cause a lot of issues we need to calculate it out. First, for example, here, from this surface and to this surface, there are some flash or unevenness. Usually in some industry, for example, automotive, we call this flash, gap and flash, right? So that means we need to find out what's the biggest flash here. Obviously, we know that assembly shift will exaggerate this flash, right? We need to consider this assembly shift independently from other factors. Even, you know, even from threaded hole, from here to here, it's exactly 30. And from this hole, from here to here, it's exactly 30. Right? If there's no assembly shift, and this surface and this surface should be in the same plane, right? But due to the assembly shift, then there's going, there's going to be a, some, a step here, right? A step here. The maximum is what? It's 0 0.6. If you move this way, or if you move the other way, so this surface could be here, but the amount will still be 0 0.6, right? If you put plus or minus here, it just means the direction of movement, either this way or other way. But you are comparing this surface to this surface, right? Or either comparing this surface to this surface. So there's always the movement from the nominal location is always 0 0.6. All right. So far, we know that the assembly shift should be considered independently from other factors. Now let's have a calculation of these two parts. Number one here, the threaded hole, there's a linear tolerance here. That means the center of this threaded hole to this bottom surface is this one. And here there's another tolerance is the whole center. From here to here is this tolerance. Now we need to calculate out what's the maximum flush or what's the maximum uneven distance between these two surfaces. So how many factors we should consider? Number one here from this surface, we go from here, this number one. Next, we go to the threaded hole and the fastener. Some people may say, oh, there's a minor clearance between threaded hole and fastener. That's true, but this value is very small comparing with other factors. The second, because the fastener has some self-centered affection when it's mounted into the threaded hole. So that's why in this case, you know, in most of the case, we don't consider the clearance between the fastener and the threaded holes, okay? But it doesn't mean in every case. Sometimes the uh, tolerance, what you try to calculate out is what it tight, you know? That means even minor, uh, is assembly shift between the threaded hole and the fastener, you should also consider that. But in this case, 
here, the tolerance is so big, right? So we don't consider the assembly shift between the fastener and the threaded hole. Next one, we'll go to here. We should consider the assembly shift between the fastener and the hole here. So the next one is assembly shift, as we calculated out before, plus minus 0 0.6, right? The next one, now the dimension tolerance chain come to the center of this hole and the center to this hole, to the bottom surface here, this is number three, right? This direction is up and this direction is down. So always there's one minus and there's one uh, positive and negative here. Totally, there are three factors or there are three lines if you talk about forms, you need to fill in two linear tolerance and one assembly shift. And the assembly shift is the only tolerance. There's no dimension here. Even there's a dimension here is zero, right? You don't have to put zero here. You just you just regard it as a tolerance line. Okay, it's tolerance. So here, thirty minus thirty is zero. Here, nominal is zero nominal dimension and tolerance is plus minus 2.6 and eventually we'll get answer is the flash or the unevenness between these two surfaces is plus minus 2.6 so what does it mean that means this unevenness has two directions either this is out or this is inward but it doesn't matter it's outward or inward. The distance between this surface and this and this surface is always 2.6. Right? It's always 2.6. Alright. So let's have a quick review. Assembly shift should be always considered if this if there's clearance between the fastener or pin and the horse. And the second these two parts is allowed to move freely right and this is very important during some assembly process the parts is allowed to adjust you know you you adjust parts to some positions in that case these two parts is not allowed to move freely it's not allowed to reach any possible location that this gap is allowed, right, enabled. So it's very important to remember that unless there's no adjustment, manual adjustment or whatever between these two parts, this part is allowed to shift to any position as long as the gap is allowed, enabled, right? So then you are, you have to use the assembly shift. Otherwise, if there's an adjustment, don't use that. Don't use this assembly shift. All right. And there's another case for floating fastener. Comparing with fixed fastener, floating fastener has more assembly shift because there's a gap for each part, right? So you can find out here, number one is this one, number two is this assembly shift. Number three is this assembly shift. There's two assembly shift should be considered independently. Okay, number three and the number four is this one. So totally there's two linear tolerance and two assembly shift. So we can find it out for fixed fastener assembly shift should be considered only one time for floating fastener assembly shift should be considered at two times all right let's practice another case in the previous case we have learned how to use assembly shift and the previous case is one fastener you notice that and here we have two fasteners now actually in practical in practical assembly in most case the assembly 
is usually is more than two, is either two or more than two fasteners, right? So we need to find it out if there's more holes and more fasteners, how could we calculate a jumpy shift? Number one, does it mean that if there's more holes, then there's more assembly shift? The answer is no. The assembly shift only decided by two situations, either fixed fastener or floating fastener. It doesn't matter how many holes you have. You cannot say there's a two holes and there's two assembly shift. What about four holes? And there's a four assembly shift? No, it's not the case. If you have more holes here, there's a possibility that you're going to reduce your assembly shift. Why? I'm going to show you here. Let's, let's look at it here. There's two holes. But unfortunately, the distance between these two holes is more apart, is bigger. That means the distance of these two holes is bigger, but the distance between these two fasteners it becomes shorter. So you will get a assembly situation like this. See here? This is the distance, distance between two fasteners. And here is the distance between two holes. And you can see here, you just stuck here. But assembly is okay because these two fasteners are all assembled into the holes. But there's no assembly shift. You cannot shift the parts anymore. Right? So how could we achieve the maximum assembly shift? First, the hole should be bigger, as we mentioned before or shaft should be smaller if it's a shaft second the distance between the fastener and holes should always the same or should always match to each other you should be the distance should be bigger at the same time for both of them or the distance should be shorter at the same time for both of them, but should be always matched to each other. In that situation, you can achieve the maximum assembly shift. But even in that case, the assembly shift should be considered only one time. Right? It's only one time. So let's have a look at this one. What's the maximum assembly shift? The maximum assembly shift is, as we calculated before, maximum hole minus fastener and divided by two, you will get the same, plus minus 0 0.6. And there's two premise. First, the hole should be max, maximum, right? Or the shaft, if it's a shaft, should be minimum. Second, distance of two holes and shaft, two shaft, should be always identical or should be always matched to each other. Only with these two premise, then you are allowed to achieve the maximum assembly shift but you are allowed to consider only one time because this is fixed fastener, right? So once you understand that, then it's easier to solve the problem. How to calculate the maximum unevenness or the distance between this surface and this surface, this surface of flash. Number one, from, from here to here, this is number one. Number two, should we go up or go from here to here? Eventually, we, are, we need to come back to this surface, right? Or should we go from here and then go down directly? Let's try this way. If you go up, 
as we mentioned. If you go up, eventually you need to go down, right? And we have said the distance between the fastener and the distance between the holes should be always identical. Otherwise, you cannot get a maximum assembly shift. For the torrent stack up, we are always consider the worst situation. We try to find out the worst situation in order to get the result. We try to find it out. The worst situation is the maximum assembly shift. You have to make this happen, the maximum assembly shift, right? So if there's distance between here and here is always identical, that means you don't have to go up and down because there's positive and there's a minus. It's going to deduct it, right? So you just go from here and direct it to here. You get second one is AS, assembly shift. And the last one is from here to here. The same one, same one, right? This, you're going to find the same result as the one fastener, all right? All right, this is the answer we can get. Two linear and one assembly shift. And eventually we get the same result here. The key thing here is the assembly shift is only decided by the two assembly situation, either fixed fastener or floating fastener. You should consider it either either one time or two times. It depends it's fixed or floating. Right? It's not depend on the number of the holes. Or depend on the quantity of these holes. Okay. All right. So here we have learned uh, how to use this assembly shift. As we mentioned, uh, the assembly shift is only used that the two parts is allowed to move freely. And if there are some situations, you, you adjust the parts to the designated position you want, then don't use the assembly shift. All right. Thanks for watching. In the next module, we will learn how to calculate assembly shift in a real case.